you are not eight times world champion by coincidence because you are a pretty cool guy. What are you talking about? I, I would like to go at this point. And I went, and then he said no. Let's face it, we have communication problem in our team. Could be disaster for the French, no! <laughs> He wasn't really racing, he was just delivering the boat around the course, really. This is a guy who's made a habit of winning, and all of a sudden he's lost his mojo. It's crushing for him. Dans ma vie, je voulais faire euh, professeur de sport. Pas à l'école, tu vois. Pas possible. Bon, moi, je vais rester à la voile. Hein. Et ben, en fait, après, au fur et à mesure, euh, la voile, elle se dit bah, Ah ouais, c'est génial en fait. Bah attends, euh, je peux peut-être essayer de faire ça, ça, ça. Ah bah t'es champion. Bah, bon, bah pourquoi pas l'année prochaine Et puis t'es en champion. Euh, voilà, c'est bien. Et ainsi de suite. Tu sais, dans la vie, tu sais pas de quoi demain sera fait. When you see Billy smiling on the water, it's because he's happy to be on the water. But don't get me wrong, Billy is a killer. Billy is a, is a professional, he's a, he's a winner. He, you know, he's very Latin, and, and when, uh, when he's not happy, he's, he just says it. Billy is, is a natural, and most of the new skipper and new husband are playing with numbers only. Billy can do a full race without looking at the screen on the wing just going by the wind and the way you feel on the wind and the tactic and the speed of the boat. I would call that a natural. There's not that many people who manage a boat just by the feeling. Alors Billy, il est assez différent quand il est sur l'eau et quand on est à terre puisque euh, sur l'eau c'est vraiment un compétiteur dans l'âme, il veut rien lâcher, ça va être un gros pitbull. Et, euh, et à terre, il est assez jovial, il peut être très fun, on peut, on peut vraiment se marrer, se taper des bonnes barres, c'est assez sympa. Yeah, Billy is an eight-time world champion. Yes, he's with the NACRA, but he's also with the F-18, he's also with the DART, he's also with the youth uh, with OB-16. And you are not eight times world champion just by coincidence because you are a pretty cool guy. Billy was absolutely dominating the NACRA class leading into the, you know, the Rio Olympics. He was the clear favorite to win with uh, Marie. Just before the Rio games, Billy injured his back. And the injury is so severe that absolutely everyone who knows about it thinks that Billy's not going to compete, except Billy. It was just an amazing scene, you know? He had to be delivered down to his boat in a wheelchair. Boy, that'd be tough to, to have an injury like that and, uh, and you know, have to go into competition. That compromise, you know, I, I would just, I would have been absolutely, I know, frustrated, probably livid. But hey, by the way, he went into the medal race despite the fact that he, he was in a pretty bad shape. And it's amazing for somebody who spent pretty much every evening in the hospital, he finished sixth at the end. For me, Billy was probably too much under pressure because he was the top guy. Probably because everybody told him that he will be gold medal anyway. Not even getting on the podium in Rio destroys Billy's confidence. I mean, this is a guy who's made a habit of winning and all of a sudden he's lost his mojo. It's, it's crushing for him. Billy Besson is the kind of guy who doesn't give up. So he goes back to Lake Annecy, his hometown, surrounded by his family and his friends, regroups and starts training again. I think that one of the greatest forces of Billy would be that he doesn't lose anything. When there's something he wants to do, he'll go to the end and he'll try to fight for it. And he'll try to take everyone with him in his spiral to bring him down to the bottom. And Billy is the kind of guy for the last 10 years who did everything by himself. He didn't have really a, a psych psychology, you know, sports psychology coach behind him. 
um, and, and a big entourage who was preparing. He did everything by himself and he's focused. He's focused because he wants to win. You know, that's for, for sure something that we can take away from him. He wants to win. Quand on veut réussir quelque chose, le plus important c'est de, de faire step by step, donc du coup de faire un objectif. Une fois qu'on a fait l'objectif, on fait un autre objectif. Hop, et puis une fois qu'on a fait cet objectif, on refait un autre objectif, et ainsi de suite. He will continue until the end. He will. He will never give up, and that that's I love it because even if he's got this feeling attitude all the time, he's quite relaxed. He knows what it takes to to win the race. In the first season of Sail GP, Russell Coates offers Billy Besson a spot as the helm and CEO of Team France. And this is a huge opportunity, as it was for all of the sailors. But for Billy, it's a chance not only to race at the highest level, but also to rediscover that mojo that he'd lost. I think this French team is, is an incredibly strong team. First of all, Billy Besson, one of the best sailors in the world, multiple world champion. Euh, le niveau qui attend euh, cette course, euh, ça donne vraiment envie d'y participer. Sitting here now with Billy Besson and his crew, the team France. The erratic nature of their sailing is really costing them, and if they could just try to thread together a little bit more consistency, you feel they'd be dangerous. Billy struggled in season one. He really spent season one just trying to come to grips with the F50. In a lot of those events, he wasn't really racing. He was just delivering the boat around the course, really. France have to give the Jap Japanese boat a little bit of room. That's going to be very, very close. It's not like in the films, where you arrive directly to the first place and you say, "Allez, it's me the best. No, it's not possible. Billy Besson's day does not seem to be getting any better. And there we have it, Team France coming over to take the final spot. There's no sugarcoating it. France's performances in season one weren't up to scratch. They finished second to last, so you know, come season two, you're going to have some drastic changes. Uh, change number one, Billy's no longer CEO. He's going to get to focus just on the driving. Stepping into the CEO's position is Bruno Dubois. Russell asked me if I wanted to go with the French team. I didn't know Billy. It was something new for me, but I was ready to take the challenge. Number two, Bruno Dubois makes some big changes to the team, and some of them are really close to Billy. I needed really to take them away from their comfort zone. In amongst all the changes, there's one that heralds a big, big change for an all-French crew. Uh, Bruno brings in the British athlete Lee McMillan, who doesn't speak French. And for an all-French team, it means they're going to have to communicate in a foreign language. I got uh, an email from Bruno wondering if I'd be interested in, in joining the team in, in, in the role of, of wing trimmer. Euh, je pense que Lee nous apporte un gros avantage en anglais. Euh, vu qu'il parle bien en anglais, donc dès qu'il faut parler aux autres, euh, c'est super. Euh, non, non, mis à part ça, il, euh, franchement, il amène beaucoup d'expérience euh, parce qu'il a fait quand même deux Coupes de l'Amérique. Et ça, pour nous, c'est important. And we welcome you to the port city of Toronto, the host for event two of Sail GP's second season. And there we go on the gun. Here we go. It's a drag race. Le bateau CLGP est juste incroyable en technologie. C'est comme si on essayait de demander à une Formule 1, mais d'être conduit par cinq personnes. Un qui conduit, un qui a l'accélérateur, un qui a le frein, un qui règle les amortisseurs, un qui règle la pression des pneus à chaque virage. Et donc là, il faut faire un virage et dire ah bah tiens euh, le virage ah bah toi tu réduis là moi je réduis là je freine là et moi j'accélère là et toi tu tournes et tout ça c'est pareil I thought more from Billy Besson and the French crew to be honest they're coming across the line here in fifth but he's going to need to step things up as the day goes on France end the day with a really good shot at making the final match race but they are going to need solid performances in both race four and five, if they want to make it a reality. Welcome to Toronto, Italy, at day two of the Italian Sail Grand Prix. 
Situated on the southern coast, this port city is now the backdrop for sailing's most prestigious series. As we are now 45 seconds away from race four, which will be followed by race five. After that, only the top three point getters will be in the final race of the day. Go, go directly to the start. Yeah. And trim the wing to load, maybe. Yep. Uh, New Zealand and Irish. Yeah. Back on board the French now. He's trying to thread the needle between that red mark and the black Kiwi boat there. It looks to me like Besson. He's trickling in. Has he timed it right at this top end of the line? Will there be a gap? Could be disaster for the French. No! <laughs> tacking around, tacking around. Tacking around! <laughs> no, no, no room, no room. Green there. Clear start. <laughs> Guys, we still have a race. You have to relax, OK? For poor France, it uh, did not get much better. The start was a near disaster for them. They will come into eighth place. That was a race they needed maximum points, currently sitting in fourth place overall. But after this performance, they only pick up one point. I think it's very difficult to go into a race knowing that your opposition's beaten you more than you've beaten them. Just trust me too, huh? I don't know Sometimes what you want. OK. What on earth were you wanting to go. do there? Here we go. What on earth are you talking about? I, I would like to go at this point. And I went, and then you said no. What are you okay. talking about? Nothing, oh, nothing, nothing. Les courses durent à peine 12 minutes, donc on n'a pas le temps. On n'a pas le temps de parler, on n'a pas le temps de, de s'expliquer, de dire pourquoi je veux ça, pourquoi je veux ci. Il n'y a pas le temps. Il faut être euh, carré dans la communication et dire, euh, dire que les choses essentielles, qu'il faut faire marcher le bateau, ça, ça, ça. Donc c'est euh, frustrant, mais c'est comme ça. I go that, that way just to go at this boy, because I want to go at the right boy at the end. But we're okay. so far away in, in these conditions. It's Come not on. a ley line. If I say to you, I, there's no point me saying anything. On a euh, des fois euh, deux opinions différentes, donc deux visions différentes euh, du plan d'eau ou euh, de la situation tactique. Comment il faut faire? The, the, the right leg. So we didn't do at all times. So that's why I was a bit angry because I, I just wanted to try to go at the left at the bottom just to try you know J just to try because we didn't try mon anglais n'est pas aussi euh, fluent que mon français et donc du coup des fois j'ai du mal à exprimer ce que je veux que ce que je veux dire et c'est très dur pour moi parce que ben ça me frustre et, euh, et c'est pour ça que des fois je suis euh, je suis énervé mais je suis énervé aussi contre moi-même parce que ben euh, j'arrive pas à dire ce que je veux dire euh, j'arrive pas à faire comprendre euh, ce que je veux faire et, et c'est ça qui est chiant c'est dur pour moi it's clear you know let's face it we have communication problem in our team you know when you're sitting at 50 knots you have no time to google translate what uh, what you are thinking so sometimes there's a clash I misunderstand what he's thinking or saying. So, you know, everyone gets frustrated with each other. And for sure, we just have to find a way that it, that it works. And talk on, a, on behalf of the team, Billy and, and Lee. You know, you are a really wonderful person. You are fantastic sailors. And I think we would like you to get along well and. We're here to win the race. If you don't want to go on holiday together, that's fine with us. I'm sure you will in the future, but let's win today. Je n'ai pas la science infuse. Je... Tout le monde a un cerveau, tout le monde peut penser. Et peut-être que la meilleure idée ou la meilleure réponse est dans un des cerveaux que l'on a. 
Et c'est pour ça que c'est très important de parler tous ensemble, parce que plus on parle tous ensemble, mieux on va avoir une idée qui va se dire « Ah ouais, c'est pas bête ce qu'il dit. Ah ben tiens, on va peut-être prendre ça, on va essayer ça, on va essayer ça. » Et ça, pour moi, c'est important. You need to be, to be uh, ease the wing and stop the boat and uh, completely stop. I don't know if you all agree about that. Billy is trying to kind of get the best out of himself as well as the rest of us, and he's not, you know, close-minded to changing. We're just all still learning each other's strengths and weaknesses, and and uh, and trying to put it together on the boat. Okay, run up and H1. Yeah, maybe the most consistent boat is France, three, three, and three. So three podium finishes. A great job by Billy Bassone and his squad getting it together, being consistent. Both super professional and both want to win. And 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 they're pushing. They're pushing themselves really hard to find the best solution. And France finishing in second place. So a good showing from Billy Basson, very consistent throughout the weekend. And it looks like they have punched their ticket into the final. 100% Todd, I can confirm that puts France in the top three and into the final in the last race today. Here we go with the start of the final race. This is for the honors of taking home the top prize here at the Great Britain Sail Grand Prix. And it looks to be perfect starting for Jimmy Spithill and Team USA. It's America out in front, France coming in second. If you give Jimmy Spithill that much canvas and that much room, it's a dangerous proposition. Pour moi, c'est simple, hein. euh, c'est peu importe qui est euh, à côté de moi, je m'en fous, ce que je veux, c'est gagner. Donc, euh, qui s'appelle Jimmy Spittil, euh, Tom Slisby, euh, Robert ou euh, Thomas, pour moi, c'est pareil, c'est tout pareil. Looking for a nice lay line here. So we've uh, got a duck on um, USA. Yep. That's Millen saying out. we've got a duck on the USA. That means the French have closed right up. We saw from the helicopter shot there, they are neck and neck and neck coming in to the top mark. Through both the French and the Americans have got one more attack to do as Jimmy Spithill winds the boat up into attack to face the Australians. But it's the French that have wound up in pressure. It's the French that are on starboard. It's the French that should own this mark. And there is multiple lead changes on leg three. Je suis né à Tahiti euh, sur euh, un trimaran. Euh, mon père est français, ma mère est tahitienne. Puis vivre sur un bateau, c'est beaucoup plus cool. Quoi. Euh, euh, la vie est plus simple. C'est plus simple, plus nature. On n'a pas de grande terrasse. Hein. Le terrasse, euh, c'est la mer. Très jeune, je fais du bateau. donc J'ai commencé l'optimiste à 4 ans. Et je voulais faire euh, Tahiti, Morea, Tahiti. Donc euh, 40 km. Et puis on restait toute la journée à faire les Robinson, les, les, des conneries sur, sur une île. Et les parents, pour eux, c'était normal. Euh, tu sais, il y a les optimistes, euh, souvent en initiation, et il y a des numéros. Et ben moi, il fallait avoir le numéro 1. Donc j'arrivais toujours le premier, et je prenais toujours le bateau numéro 1. Toujours. Tous les matins, je regardais les conditions de vent, pour aller euh, pour faire le meilleur euh, score. J'étais là et puis le dernier jour, euh, je, dis à ma, je dis à maman, euh, bah faut y aller maintenant. Elle me dit non, parce que là, il faut que tu ailles à l'école. Et je dis non, non, euh, il faut y aller. C'est... Euh... Ah. Pardon. C'est le vent. Le vent était parfait, il y avait les vagues, c'était génial. C'était le moment d'y aller. Starboard is the French that should own this mark, and there is multiple lead changes on leg three. I just don't know where to look. This race is alive. Moi, je, ben déjà, je viens de Tahiti. J'ai appris à faire de la voile d'une certaine manière, avec beaucoup de feeling, parce que pour moi, euh, c'est c'est quelque chose qui m'a jamais trompé dans toute ma vie. When he reaches this gate, 
Billy decides to continue on his current course. It's a totally different tactic to both Australia and the USA. And it's clear, we've seen this a few times, that Billy thinks differently. He's got this different approach. And I think is what's gonna give him the edge over two of the greatest sailors this sport's ever seen. Notre but de Plymouth était de faire le plus simple possible. This is the race for the win in Plymouth. Okay, round up. Nice angle. Rounding at the same time. This is all on. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. This is the last downward leg before the reach, the finish. It is all on between these two teams. For the first time in five years, we are seeing the Billy Besson who won eight world championships. It's undisputedly the best head-to-head -head racing we've seen this season. OK, Tom Slingsby on board the Australians could be for the win right here. Yes, the Australians are ahead, but they've got that one turn to go. If they lose speed in that turn, Billy is going to fly past them. Will the French be able to use the down speed of the Australians to step past them? Uh, no, no issue with him. No we're issue with right. him is the call we're off going. board the Australians. And they're accelerating. That might have been the jibe on, that won him. the event. Cool is, is a move of the day. Yep. And now the dirty wind coming off the sail of Australia, sail GP. That could have been the move. Et donc, du coup, on voulait faire des choses très simples pour que ce soit efficace. Mais tu vois, on n'a peut-être pas bien fait parce qu'on finit deuxième. Les autres ont fait plus de distance, ils ont gagné. Donc ça veut dire que c'était bien, mais pas excellent. And the French coming across the line in second. Bravo, Billy Besson. Well, when we look at the CLGP Insights powered by Oracle Cloud, what we can see is that on the last leg. Billy, even though he executes one less maneuver, doesn't get to um, his perfect angle as fast as Tom Slingsby. And all of that time counted for about 40 or 50 meters a loss over the Australian team. Hey, go on, Billy, guys. Well done. The way that we've sailed um, in Plymouth is kind of shown Billy's ability to, to adapt and, and to kind of like, you know, recognizing where things weren't going well in Toronto and, and putting it right in Plymouth. I think he really wants to succeed. He wants to, there hasn't really been a French team in, in the last, you know, 20, 25 years that has really, you know, competed successfully at the top of the game against the best in the world. I think he believes that they can and he really wants to do that before he ages out. We have a lot of work to do to be, to be in the top three. But, you know, the good news is the same for the other teams. Je suis quelqu'un qui, qui lâche rien, <laughs> qui lâche pas beaucoup. Et donc, du coup, je, je reste accroché tout ce que je peux. Si, si ça peut m'apporter le mojo, eh ben, ben feu, hein. Je vais rester là hein, et je vais, re, je vais travailler pour l'avoir et pour que les autres pensent que j'ai le mojo. Parce que si les autres pensent que j'ai le mojo, c'est déjà mort pour eux. C'est mort. <rires>